If you're a Google Data Studio user looking for ways to speed up your reporting workflow whilst getting the most out of the tool, then I've got seven pro tips and hacks that will help you do just that. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Learn BI Online with me, Adam Feiner, helping you do more with data. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the lesser known and more advanced Data Studio functionalities that will help you to supercharge your dashboard design processes. If you're a beginner or intermediate level user, then I think you'll find some, if not all of these, very helpful indeed. Let's start with number one. Either from the file menu or simply by right-clicking a page of the report, you can access the report settings. In these global settings, for example, you can add a filter that will apply to the whole report or even a Google Analytics segment if you're working with a Google Analytics data source. This saves you from having to add the same filter to each individual widget or page in the report. The same goes for date ranges. You can set a custom date range that will be applied to the whole report. If you'd like to be able to share filtered versions of the report or allow your report viewers to do so, you can activate custom bookmark links. How does this work? Well, in view mode, when the viewer applies filters via controls in the report, their filter selections will get added to the URL of the report as parameters. If I then copy and paste this URL into a new tab, you can see that the report loads with the filters pre-applied. This functionality is great for being able to share different versions of the same report with different people. Obviously, the data isn't secured and any viewer can simply unfilter the report to see all the data. But it's really useful for if, when you're working with a report, applying filters, and you find some interesting insights that you'd like to share, you can just share the custom URL instead of downloading a PDF or sending a screenshot, etc. Finally, on report settings, you can enter your Google Analytics measurement IDs. By doing this, you'll be able to see things like how many times your report has been opened and where your users are coming from. You can add one Universal Analytics and or one Google Analytics 4 ID and you should start to see data coming through after 24 hours. Quick bonus hack, you should also be aware that you can apply filters and a custom date range to individual pages as well, just by right-clicking the page and selecting Current Page Settings. Next up, report level elements. As well as being able to have global report settings, you can also have global report elements. This means that they'll be added to each page of the report, either existing pages or when you add new pages. So if I were to add a rectangle to the top of the page, send it to the back using control or command down arrow, and perhaps add some text, then I select these three elements, including the filter control, right click and select make report level. Now, when I add a new page, we can see that those elements have been automatically added. One thing to note is that the elements will remain in the same place for all pages. If you were to move an element on one page, that change would also be applied to all other pages. Next up is a great time-saving hack for when you're designing your dashboard and applying styles to widgets. Here I have four scorecard widgets and one of them has different style options applied. If I wanted to apply those same options to the other three scorecards, I would just need to select the first one, choose copy, either from the editing menu or by using your keyboard shortcut. Then I select the other three and choose editing, paste special and paste style only. Voila. This next hack is actually another way that makes applying the same options to multiple widgets even easier. If I wanted to change something on all of my scorecards, for example, I would just need to select one scorecard, then right click, select and scorecards on page. That will select all of the scorecards. Now I can not only change the style options in the style tab, but also in the setup tab, I can change the data source they're taking data from and apply a custom date range as well. 
I can even apply a comparison date range that will be applied to all the scorecards at the same time. Do note that the bulk editing options available will vary depending on which visualization type you've selected. Another quick hack at your disposal when you're working with multiple widgets like these scorecards is the options you have for aligning and distributing them. Here you can see that they are scattered at the top of the page. If I wanted them to all be in alignment, I can just select the four scorecards, right click and choose vertical alignment top. And there you go. Then if you wanted to space them out equally, you can right click and choose distribute horizontally. Hack number six is one that's great if you want to have the filter controls in your report only apply to certain widgets. Let's add a new filter control for device category. Then I select the filter along with these two widgets here, right click and choose group. Now, when I apply a filter, you can see that it's only affecting those widgets that the filter is grouped with. One thing to bear in mind, however, is that this grouping doesn't work when you've got a report level filter. You would need to make that filter page level instead. This last hack is probably the most powerful of the bunch and is used when you have two charts containing data that you want to blend together, but the data source won't let you. Here's an example. In this report, I have two column charts. Both contain sessions by page title coming from a GA4 data source, with the one on the right being filtered on organic traffic. What I'd like to do is to have both results combined in one chart, side by side. Normally, to do this, I would create a filtered metric using the case function. So, case when sessions default channel grouping equals organic, then sessions end. But ah, as you're probably well aware, if you've ever tried this kind of thing in a GA data source, that's not allowed. Because as the error message states, you cannot mix dimensions and metrics in the same formula. That's pretty limiting until you realize that you can actually blend these two charts together to achieve our desired result. To do this, we simply select both charts, right click and choose blend data. Hey presto, a third chart is created combining the two series of data. Now I can just delete the two original charts and leave the combined one. The result of this blend is a blended data source that you can see and access here. If you're new to Data Studio and you'd like to become highly proficient, why not check out my five hour online course here? Or if you'd like a quick 15 minute getting started tutorial, click here. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video valuable, then please do hit that like button. And while you're there, why not subscribe for more videos like this? Until then, stay BI curious.